This episode from the life of Sherlock Holmes will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by short wave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And as for me, well, I'd like to tell you that a time like right now is the perfect time for a glass of Petri California Port. After you've had a good dinner, boy, Petri Port is a real topper. That rich, deep red Petri Port is really an extraordinary wine. Even its color's different. And as for its flavor, well, it'll take a better man than me to describe that. Petri Port is a hearty wine, sure. And every other quality that you look for in a good port, you'll find in Petri Port and then some. Try Petri Port by itself or serve it with fruit, with nuts, or with cake. But share it with your friends, will you? Because you can serve it proudly. After all, it is a Petri wine, and that name Petri is the proudest name in the history of American wines. And now let's visit our old friend and host, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Bartell. Good evening, Doctor. Settle yourself down and get your pipe going. Thanks. Doctor, last week you told us that tonight's story took place in the Casbah at Algiers. Yes, the Casbah. I remember it as the place of countless streets winding up and down, past colorful cafes where a hundred tongues were spoken, and often a street would end in shadowy darkness which a man would be foolhardy to enter alone. Yes, Mr. Bartell, that was the Casbah that Sherlock Holmes and I knew in that winter of 99. Well, how did you happen to be out there, Doctor? <laughs> Do you mind if I tell you the story from the start, Mr. Bartell? It really began on a wintry night in Baker Street at the conclusion of a strange murder mm. in Montrevor Castle. A charming young girl sat on the sofa of our lodgings in Baker Street and talked. Mr. Holmes, you can't say you'll have nothing more to do with the murder. Right, I found the true murderer of the Dowager Countess and committed suicide. Surely the case has ended. Yes, Mr. Holmes, you found the real murderer. But now I want you to find the unfortunate young man who fled England five years ago when he was suspected of a crime. This is a new development, Mr. Stetfield. Please tell us about it. It's Douglas Milton that I'm talking about. Oh, yes, yes. He was the heir to the title, wasn't he? Yes, Mr. Holmes. He was a sensitive, artistic boy, and, and when he knew that he was under suspicion, he ran away. Mm-hmm. Of course, everyone regarded his flight as an, as an admission of guilt. That is, until you found the real culprit, Mr. Holmes. I imagine, Miss Tretful, that your interest in the missing boy is not entirely, shall we say, uh, altruistic? I'm in love with him, Dr. Watson. Oh. We were engaged to be married when he ran away. Mr. Holmes, you've got to find him. He must know that his name has been cleared and that he's inherited the title. Miss Tretfield, uh, have you any direct news, any letter from your fiancé since he left five years ago? None. Any clues as to his hiding place? Only this. It's a painting I received anonymously a year after he had left. Oh. It was sent from a forwarding address in London. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Small oil painting. Very good one, too, I say. Yes. The splendid sense of composition and his use of color is unusually brilliant. You recognize this painting as the work of your fiancé, Miss Stretfield? I'm certain of it. Yes. Wonderful use of color. Serve the delicate shadings of that sunset and the brilliant green of the oasis. This scene is extraordinarily reminiscent of the desert in North Africa. Yes, yes, that's what made me say I was certain he'd gone abroad, Mr. Holmes. But why should he go to North Africa? A good place, Watson, for an Englishman who imagines himself to be escaping justice. Remember the foreign legion is stationed there. You think he might have joined the legion, Mr. Holmes? Right. It would seem logical. No questions are asked to those who join it, and its colorful obscurity might easily appeal to a young fellow in trouble. Hello. What is it, Holmes? Well, quite a few grains of sand between the canvas and the frame here. Mr. Stretfield, do you mind if I pry the canvas loose? Do anything you like, Mr. Holmes, if it gives you any clue to Douglas's whereabouts. Give me your penknife, will you, Watson? Uh, yeah. Thanks, old chap. Uh, here we are. Can you see anything? Uh-huh. Look. The word Sheriff. An Ella Froon. A stamped here. Sheriff is probably the framer's name, and Ella Froon is a town some 50 miles from Algiers. That settles it. Miss Stratfield, I accept your case. Watson and I will go to Africa and try to find your fiancé, Douglas Milton. (laughs) 
Monsieur Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. I have heard of you so often, but I never thought I should see you here at the headquarters of the Foreign Legion. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, Colonel Brisson, I'm uh, trying to trace an Englishman who has been missing during the past four years. I have reason to believe that he uh, might have joined the Legion. Yeah, I shall look in my records. Uh, let me see, four years ago would be 1895. Uh, if Sherlock Holmes is tracking him, then I suppose he was in trouble in his own country. If he was in trouble, he might easily have come to us. We ask no questions. 97, 96, ah, 95. In that year, three young Englishmen joined us. One of them died of dysentery two years ago in Sidaraji. One of them deserted 18 months ago, and we have been unable to trace him. The third is my adjutant who brought you into my office just now. And he is, I would say, about um, three inches shorter than Douglas Milton. And men do not uh, shrink from the foreign legion, eh, Colonel? <laughs> they do not, Miss Jones. Uh -huh. The fellow who deserted must be our man. Unless it's the one who died of dysentery. Colonel de Brisson, how would you advise us to set about trying to find a deserter? Monsieur Holmes, there's only one place in Algeria where a man can hide from the Foreign Legion and remain hidden. Oh, and what's that place? The Kaspar in Algiers. Then that's our destination, Watson. Uh, be very careful, mm -hmm. please, gentlemen. The Kaspar is a place where the law is exiled. The police have no jurisdiction there. The only rule is that of strength, violence, and trickery. We shall be very cautious, I assure you. Goodbye, Colonel de Brisson, and thank you for your help. Well, I must say that I think Colonel de Brisson rather exaggerated the dangers of the Casper. <laughs> I suppose you're going to tell me this cafe is the headquarters for a dope smuggling ring or white slaving or something. Its ramifications are even more extensive than those you've mentioned. You're joking, Holmes. I assure you I'm not, old fellow. Huh? My old friend Juamel is chief of police in Algiers. When I told him our mission, he advised me to come here. A 500 franc note and the proprietor can obtain any and all information regarding the underworld. For as little as 200 francs, can arrange a murder. So that gives you some idea of the relative values of the Casper. Good Lord, then you've already spoken to the proprietor? Oh, yes, yes. A charming scoundrelly fellow by the name of Rafi. I gave him 500 francs and asked him to set his underworld grapevine in motion to see whether an Englishman living in hiding here in the Casbah could be found. And I thought we'd come here for a quiet meal. <laughs> here comes Rafi now. Let's hope he has new for us. Here we are, Rafi. Come uh -huh. sit down, won't you? Uh, Rafi works fast, does he not, Mr. Holmes? Uh... Uh, your friend is... My friend knows that you're working with me. We'll be found out. A, a drink first. The tongue of Rafi is parched. <laughs> Would you have me die of thirst before I give you my news? <laughs> uh, vermouth cassis. Uh, you have news for me, then? Uh, but yes. Good, what is it? First, you will pay me more money, no? Uh, but I gave you 500 francs. You said that you'd do the job for that. Can I help it if some tongues are more costly to make wag than others? <laughs> it took the 500 to get the wag. Am I to have nothing for my own trouble? Ah, good, good. Uh, the gentleman will pay for it. <laughs> there you are. Merci, Missy. I will drink to your health, gentlemen, both of you. You will pay me more money, no? If my friend's already given you 500, you should stick to your bargain, my good fellow. My information is a bargain at 750 francs. It would be a bargain at 1,000, but Rafi will let you have it for 750 <laughs> because he likes you. You will give it to me, no? And if I refuse? <laughs> then you get no information, and uh, perhaps I spread news in the Casbah that makes it uncomfortable for you gentlemen to be there. Great Scott, this is blackmail. I get the money.